Hi and welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. I did my initial review on the Nikon 18-200 VR2 and I uh, was very pleased with it from what I could see in initial sort of use and thought. So what I'm going to do is talk about each picture, tell you the settings that it was on and give my thoughts on, on the lens. Here's the lens uh, mounted on my D7000. In use it was um, a joy to be fair. I carried it around hanging on a side sling and at no point without the lock on did it zoom creep. I will show you some uh, issues, not issues, but the, the compromises if you like with having a lens which is 3.5 to 5.6. Bearing in mind when I'm shooting at the zoo I'm generally at 200mm so I'm shooting at 5.6 or above and I'll show you the difference between that and a 2.8 lens with regards to blowing out the background and bokeh, which is where this lens is limited. The first image I'm going to pop up on the screen, which should appear now, is of a sort of a clock tower thing in Colchester High Street. And that was taken at f3.5 at 18, sorry, at f11 at 18 mil at 1 1 25th of a second. ISO 200. Now, not a great photo, but the idea is there's something in that picture which is nice and easy to zoom in on. So the next picture which I'm going to put up um, now is just of the clock face, and that is uh, zoomed in to 200mm. Again, that's at f11, uh, ISO 200, and this time it's at 1 80th of a second. But that is that will show you the zoom range. So it's at 18mm and 200mm. Now, when it comes to sharpness of the lens, etc., um, the next picture I'm going to throw up is a crop of the, um, the, the little hand and the 12 position of that clock. So if you bear in mind, that's at 200mm, and then I've cropped in a tiny piece of that photo, and that shows you how sharp this lens actually is. And there's no editing, no sharpening or anything on that. That's as, as it was. Okay. So, um, moving on now to my zoo pics. The first picture I'm going to put up is a, a bit of um, an arty farty one, really. It's of a uh, little waterfall, and the reason I wanted to take this picture was to the idea was to slow the shutter speed down so I could blur the water but still have the vibration reduction holding everything in focus. And I think it worked reasonably well. I didn't have a lot to work with. So this was taken at 70mm, ISO 320, at a half a second at f25. And as you can see, the colours are nice and rich and lovely in that. Okay, low light performance. Now this is where the, I think the 18 to 200, I'm sorry, the 80 to 200 f2.8 or the 70 to 200 f2.8 has come into their own. I'm going to put up a picture now of a chimpanzee. Now, this was taken at 170mm, f5.6, and 1 13th of a second. So we're really pushing the boundaries on holding at 170mm. This is ISO 1600, and I think you'll agree that's um, reasonably sharp. You know, the light is really poor in there. So I'm, you know, quite happy with that sort of performance. Okay, um, this shot outside and the next few I'm going to show you are to to show you how much of the background you can blur out and there's a lot of factors involved here the closer you are to the subject um, the further the the background is behind the subject the better but at the end of the day I'm at a zoo there's a meerkat over there I can't change anything other than where I stand so I'm going to stand as close as I can to the subject and blow out the background as much as I can so this is a f5.6 um, again at 200mm, ISO 400 and 1 one sixtieth of a second. And now as you can see the background is blown out but it's not what I would sort of call creamy smooth blown out. It's okay and it's not too distracting because there wasn't a lot there. There's a log over to the right hand side but it, it's not, you know, not fantastic but it's okay. Um, the next one, again this was f5.6. And what I'm showing you here is because the elephant is a long way away from me and is closer to the background 
than, so the distance between the elephant and the background is less than me to the elephant, the background is pretty much in focus. And you know, there's not a lot you can do about that at the end of the day. This next picture of a, a tiger, I just wanted to show you the, the colour contrast and I'm you know, really happy with the definition and, and the colour. These are just JPEGs out of the camera. Again, I've, I've not edited it. This was a f5.6, 640 ISO, 200 mil, 1 320th of a second. All of these um, next three images I'm gonna put up are of wolves. And again, what you'll see is, is the background can be a bit distracting. So this first one, Beautiful on the wolf, nice and sharp on the eyes. However, background I think is distracting in that because at 5.6 you're just not able to blow the background out as much. Again, the next one, the tree in the background is a distraction because it's not really blown out. Again, 5.6, 200mm. And this third one, 5.6, 200mm, hundredth of a second. Again, it, you know, it, it's not really blowing the background out as much as, you know, you would hope in a nice photo. Penguin. And this last picture uh, with this lens is of a, a dog. And again, that's at 200mm f5.6, hundredth of a second. But, you know, the background is quite distracting in this picture. If I just show you what can be done with a... Uh, 2.8 lens, but this was taken at f2.8, 200 mil, but I was really close to it and the background was really far away. So, you know, this was ideal conditions and this is of an ostrich just of the head and eyes. So I've, I've focused on the eyes and, you know, the background is absolutely completely gone. Uh, the next image is of a hyena. Now, this was only at f3.2, 200 mil, but you can still see even, you know, this this is a case a bit like the elephant where the, the background is probably closer to the hyena than I am to the hyena. So, but even at f3.2, that's still done a good job of, of sort of mushing that background. Um, the last one I'm going to show you is a, uh, a good picture to show the depth of field. Now, the, the main point of focus was if you go from the back of the picture was the second guy in. Um, so we're focused on him, so you, as you can see, this was at 2.8, 80th of a second at 200 mil. And as you can see again, the background is absolutely blown out completely, completely gone. That's at 2.8, 200 mil, um, you know, ideal scenario. So that is the compromise when you're buying something that's a 3.5 to 5.6 as opposed to an f2.8 lens. Obviously, you pay a lot more money for that, but it's just to give you an idea of, of what you can expect from this lens. So unless you can get it really close to your subject and your background is really far away, don't expect creamy smooth bokeh that you get with an f2.8. One last picture I was going to show you just for fun. Uh, this is where I, I spent my Christmas. This is looking across the River Thames at the pub where I had my lunch and it was a sunrise, and this was taken with a, a kit lens, an 18 to 55 VR lens, and I just thought it was a nice picture. To That's my sort of continued review on the uh, Nikon 18 to 200. I'm really happy with it so far. As I say, we're gonna get another one um, for my other half, because her Tamron uh, 18 to 270 is just packed up, even though it is virtually brand new. It's given up the ghost, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to get another one of these however what it does not do is it doesn't replace my 80 to 200 f 2.8 and when i eventually get it my 70 to 200 vr2 ah, that's a long way off but um yeah so it will not replace that lens but as a carry around all day lens to take to the zoo to take pictures of the kids um to do landscapes absolutely no issues with it whatsoever um the distortion yeah, there's a bit, if you look at the bricks in the picture, the first one, uh, and you're going to get a little bit of um, distortion at 18 mil, a bit of pin cushioning and, and stuff like that. But you don't really notice it that much in the image. And if I want, I can do that and sort all that out in camera anyway. So anyway, this has been GRVO TV. I hope I haven't got on too long. And I hope this video helps. And um, final sum up on the 18-200. to Buy it. Cheers, bye.